Today on the Montessori Dictionary, I'm going to be talking to you about a very special material, a material that is versatile, can be used in many ways, and also something that's easy for you to make at home. You don't have to go out and buy it. We call this material the cards and the counters. And I'm going to show you how to use this material. And I'm also going to tell you about the wonderful benefits that children will gain by using this material. You may or you may not know them, but let's find out together. All right, and today we're going to learn how to use the cards and the counters. Now when we count, what's the first number? One. Can you find it and place it at the top of the mat? Do you know what comes after one? Two. Can you find it and place it next to that? What comes after that? Three. Yes. Would you like to line up all the numbers in the correct order? <laughs> okay, now Aryan, today I have some counters here and we're going to be matching the correct number of counters to each of these cards. Let's put number one down here. How many counters do you think I need to place here? One. Can you count with me? One. one. Now, how many counters do you think I need to place here? Two. Let's count together, okay? One. one two. Two. Okay. Six. Six seven, seven. Eight. eight nine. nine. What number is this, Aryan? Ten. Okay, can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did we finish all our counters? Yes. Right, so we've matched all the correct number of counters to the cards, all right? Now what we're gonna do is we're going to put these counters away and I'd like you to do this all by yourself. Can you do that? So that's the basic way that we present this simple to use material. Easy, right? You can do this at home. Now if you don't have this material, you haven't bought it, it's so easy to make. You can just print these on buffalo paper or on cardboard and laminate them. And for the counters, you could use just about anything. You can get buttons, you can get coins, you can get, check what your child's interest is and you can use that. If your child is interested in flowers, you can get little flower buds, um, you can get little cars. You know, um, they sell erasers in many different shapes, ladybugs, um, they sell them in the shapes of little fruit. So whatever feels appealing that you feel your child might like, you can pick up and use that material as your counters. Now you can change the counters from time to time. When you feel your child might be a little bit bored of using buttons, you can switch it up to something else and it becomes something entirely brand new. So what is our child learning by using the, the cards and counters? They're learning, first of all, number and quantity association. They're learning to assign the correct number of counters to the corresponding number. As they do so, they are counting every time, starting from one, so they are reinforcing their learning of numbers. They're also seeing very visually that one is just a little bit of quantity, but as we go higher, the quantity increases, it becomes more. So they're also learning about bigger and smaller numbers. You can later, after the child has become familiar with this material, then you can ask them to, you know, simple questions of choosing the bigger number for you. And you can tell them, you know, when a number has more counters, that's the bigger number. So which one is bigger, four or 10? And they can visually see the difference in the counters. Now to start with, when you do that, you must choose numbers that are far away from each other till they get used to it. So don't start with asking them which one is bigger, two or three or two or four, because they're still getting used to uh, looking at it visually and assessing the quantity. Start with something that's very different. As you can see that your child is picking up, 
and they are you know catching on to this concept they can answer you quickly then you can bring the numbers in closer uh, they are also at the same time children are refining their eye-hand coordination which will help them when they're reading and writing they're developing their pincer grip every time they use these counters to place them their finger skills are getting stronger and getting them better ready to use a pencil so from this simple activity you can see that there is so much your child will learn in something that will just take you minutes to put together but wait that's not all when your child is older this material can be presented to a child that is anywhere from three and three and a half years to four years now when your child is five, you can bring them back to this material to teach them an entirely different concept. And that is the concept of odd and even. Would you like to see that? I'm going to bring in someone and we're going to show you how this same material can be used for odd and even. All right, today I want to teach you something interesting about these numbers. Some of these numbers, we call them odd, and some of them we call them even and I'm going to show you how we figure out which is which. Would you like to learn? Okay. So Irene, I want to teach you something special about these numbers. Okay. Some of these numbers we call them odd and some of them we call even and I'm going to show you how we figure out which is which. Now if I take my spindle and I try to push it through the middle and it gets stuck, that's an odd number. But if I take my spindle and it goes all the way through, that's an even number. So can you tell me which one is this? Odd. Even. Odd. Even. Odd. Even. Odd. Even. Okay, now I'm going to give you the spindle and I want you to tell me all the odd numbers. One. Mm -hmm. Three, five, seven, and nine. Do you think you can tell me which are all the even numbers using your spindle? Two, four, six, eight, and ten. Okay. Now, can you tell me, is number three odd or even? It's odd. How about number six? It's even. What about number four? It's also even. Arun, today you have learned about odd and even numbers using the cards and the counters. If you would like to try this again, you can take it from the shelf and you can do it again. Would you like to help me tidy? How simple was that? I remember being in school and learning about odd and even and it just went over my head. I couldn't make sense of it. I couldn't remember. Numbers are not my forte. It took me a long time to grasp the concept. But when you see it like this visually and you're using your hands to create these patterns of the counters, the children will remember. It sticks with them and things will come to them easier. Now, the important part is the pattern must be the same, all right? This is why in the very first presentation, the teacher lays out all the counters because the pattern is very important for the child so that when we come to teaching odd and even, they will be able to see that the spindle gets stuck at a certain point. So make sure that the pattern is right. If you are, the child is working on their own and they lay out the counters a bit differently, no need to worry too much. You as the parent or the teacher just correct the counters and they will start to see what's happening and they will follow the pattern too. This is a material that children can use over and over again. Uh, there are multiple things that they can learn from it as I've already told you. So please do try it out. Make it, try it out and let us know in the comments box how this worked for you. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and of course subscribe so that you don't miss a single one of our videos. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.